EvanFlies.com, and I'm here with Eddie Andrini from and Half Moon Bay, and Bud Ranley from Bellevue, Washington. And I'm here to interview them since it's the hundredth anniversary of air shows. I thought we could talk about some air shows since both of them together have about a hundred years of air show flying. I want you to know I wasn't at that first air show in Reims, France in 1909. Yes. And, and neither was I. I want you to know that, okay? <laughs> well, how are, how are the air shows that you've been flying at compared to the ones that are taking place now? Well, go ahead, bud. Mm, the, the very first air show, I'm, I'm still flying the same airplane I flew when I did my first air show. I was a demonstration pilot in the Royal Canadian Air Force flying Harvards or T6s. And I have my own T6 right now, which is my sort of one of my primary air show airplanes, along with the Yak 55 and the Fuga Magister. But the air show I did then is this pretty much the same air show I'm doing now. I'm doing some things right now I wasn't allowed to do in the military, like a snap roll and take off and some other things. But uh, now the air shows now, I think we're still in the same generation, sort of. Uh, we've got uh, we've got fast little airplanes and they're evolving hey Eddie and uh, and the old pitzes and uh, they still have the pitzes they correct they still have and they still have like my Sturman which is kind of uh, the original type barnstorming but uh, uh, and uh, and I started in a Sturman also I started flying and I did my first air show probably 1964 or something like that and and uh, and so basically I've flown different planes but basically I'm still flying a Sturman and flying a Yak mm. so but how are the air shows that were how would they set up then compared to how they're set up now oh well you know air shows were then uh, you would go out and the and you sit in the grass or a sandy field air shows are much more comfortable now they've got chalets uh, lots more services lots more things to make it family oriented you don't have to sit there and suffer quite as much as you did before however if you're out some of the some of the air shows could be without the chalets and things could be a long suffering days but their their total fans are they're willing to do that day after day aren't they Eddie? correct and uh, the shows now much more organized than were uh, originally you know the shows uh, the people would call you and see when they felt that you were uh, that you could fl do an air show, they would call you and ask you if you could come, and so it was much more informal then uh, uh, than it is now. Now they're much more organized, and because it's, everything costs more, and there's more regulations and stuff. So mm -hmm. the the difference is is, is it comes in, I think, with the regulations and stuff, and the people, uh, I think, are much more have more uh, a, a much more uh, not say talented, but much more have instructional type or kind of guidelines they have to follow a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that's what's, what's changed. It's, it's a dangerous business. And when I started in the Air Force doing demonstration shows, they didn't have demonstration pilots per se so much as they do now. Uh, they would say, hey, Joe, uh, so-and-so is having an air show this weekend. Take a T-6 down there. Hey, take, take, take a T-33 over there and do an air show. Uh, was, uh, and without the training and without the discipline to do a a routine that was choreographed, safely monitored, and that sort of thing. They were losing a lot of people. It's still one of the most dangerous businesses to begin. It's uh, it, it's actually safer to send your son over to Iraq than it is to be an air show pilot. So you have to. Probably so. There's a lot of things you have to do. I mean, uh, a two or three or a two or three percent loss rate in the air show business is not unusual. I mean, no. It's, uh, no. <clears throat> and. Uh, it, it just as much as awareness that the people have, they just have to have more of that. But and it's like Bud said, it's just a dangerous thing, you know. So as, as it turns out, in the last that. couple of years, we haven't lost anybody this year or last year during an air show. During means, an air show, which means the public is a uh, we're keeping the public safe, and there's a lot of peer pressure and yes. a lot of peer pressure on, on, on performance well, well, orientation and, and safety and that correct. sort of. We've lost people in practicing because people don't have the same same sort discipline. Of discipline that, and peer that pressure. They have to have. <clears throat> correct. And in practice, and uh, well, and, and you know, the much more uh, the, the defined area that we have to fly in, and like Bud said, peer pressure and plus the regulations that state you have to be so high, and depends what level you are. So that's made the difference for that. But uh, also, the stuff is higher performance, and so things just happen quicker sometimes. So 
uh, there, there's danger, there's risk there. Yeah. So you have to love it. It's a good, it's a good business to be afraid. <laughs> Before you take off, you want fear is your best friend. Sometimes so you want to, you want to do a good job, but you want to, you want to temper it with a certain amount of. Uh, uh, a certain fear. amount of fear and then go to your job and do it as well as you can without a, do, without doing anything unpredictable. So uh, if you're not quite sure how something is going to turn out, you don't want to be doing it at an air show first. No, but there, there's, uh, you know, like I've just, I have a passion for the air shows and doing aerobatics and I enjoy doing it in front of people. I think it's just a great thing to be able to do it, to it be is. able to give the people something like of what you do. So, but you have to... You have to kind of be careful with that too, because you, you, you want to be, you, you want to be safe, safe as you can. Yeah, you have to watch your ego. Egos, uh, it's wonderful to have an ego because it puts you where you are, but it's also one of your biggest enemies. You know? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, what specific changes have you seen between uh, early air shows and modern air shows? Uh, I, I think your, your question is sort of the same. Uh, in the old before, it was. It was okay if you decided to go out and do something stupid and dangerous because, well, I'm only going to kill myself. Now, with peer pressure, it's saying, look, it's bad for business, it's bad for sponsorship, it's bad for the organization. Correct. So your peer buddies are not going to correct. allow you to go out and do something as because stupid it, as you it, used it, to be able to do. Something. Correct, because it's bad for everybody. It's bad for everybody. But also, you know, there's that fear factor, uh, fear that's in air shows. That's why a lot of people love to go to car racing. They love to see... They're not to say they're just going for the for the accident part of it, but it's that excitement and stuff. So it's uh, on the other hand, you look at car races; they're they're actually pretty safe percentage wise. You know, you don't yeah. they don't lose that. Yeah. They have a few accidents, but they're they've learned how to protect the people. And they, well, they have yeah. guidelines and rules too. Yeah. And so their equipment is much better. You know, the the they have cages in the cars, and so there's certain criteria that they have to follow. So yeah. I don't know. I think I remember the first few shows that I started to do that that the people when they felt like that you could do a good show decently and you were safe they would ask you to come and do a show now you know that everything goes through kind of an organizational thing and uh, so that's what changes change that there's a lot more organization now you know, with the international council of air shows and regional councils of air shows and, uh, and and we demand safety of each other sort of so it's a uh, yeah it's it's a lot safer now than it used to be that's the goal. So, uh, and I think what makes it safe, safer, is the the expectation by your peers not to go do anything stupid. And and by yeah, by doing that too, there has to be too. There has to be kind of a record that looks, you know, that that follows the whole industry. That it, it is doing something. It tries to keep the the public safe. The, right. the the biggest thing. If somebody's out there in the, in the in the council of air shows, or somebody hears about somebody doing somebody doing something on a consistent basis sort of a like it's getting a little goofy uh, it'll come to the organization's attention and somebody will make me make a phone call and and if there's an agreement that behavior will change or there's not an agreement then there could be a conference call it could be something so correct uh, then it becomes well you're not going to get a traffic ticket but it's sort of so, so like that the expectation it's, now is correct. there's a there's a there's a payoff now against doing something stupid. So. The criteria and the level that that you have to kind of maintain in order to keep everything in a balance. Right. What do you think air shows will be like in the future? What changes will there be between one now mm. and ones that will Not be as in many the warbirds because the warbirds are more expensive. And uh, in the, the old days, they're going to go to remember Modesto or Madero. Oh, yeah, it used there were to 25 be Mustangs there. Like, uh, like easily 25, 20 Mustangs there. So, uh, and the guys would come for gasp, and that, so that's going to go away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so we're kind of in the good, the last of the good times now. So it's going to be harder to to put on. That sort of a deal, but there's there's people still doing music. I, I think music. that, uh, that w what really gets hurt the worst is the smaller shows because the larger shows now have a pool to draw from from people that are sponsored that have a they're, they're being sponsored. So the sponsored act, if he wants to go to a show someplace, I mean they'll actually go as far as paying the show to get there. Yeah. So, but the little shows can't afford that. The little shows have to really monitor their budget and, and then they can't afford a lot of war birds and stuff sometimes because the, the cost of the fuel you know so that make, be, becomes prohibited yeah, yeah and actually, and actually war birds are 
after the Thunderbirds and Blue Angels and say an F-18 or F-16 or F-15 named organized team, Warbirds are the number one draw. Uh, named performers are quite a ways down the list uh, after that. I mean, Sean Tucker, as well known as he is, comes way behind say Warbirds or or Thunderbirds or something like that. Uh, Correct, uh, people, but people, he's yeah. still on top of the list because he has a sponsor. Yeah. When, you're, when you have the luxury of being sponsored, you can kind of go fl fly the big shows, and that's the ones that are going to want you. Yeah, we're not sure how many people come to shows to see Luigi and Ivan. And, 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 and Ivan, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They just have to be personal, probably, that's more right, personal. That's right. <laughs> but yeah. uh, it, that is changing. Yeah. That is mm -hmm. definitely changing. Uh, and, and it's tougher, like I said, tougher for the small shows that's the ones that are gonna uh, they're really gonna get hurt the summer. worst and I think you could probably gonna see down the road you're gonna see fewer shows too mm -hmm. possibly fewer shows and and more people that are coming out of military too are, are flying now which is kind of unusual yeah and that, but, but in the last year or so even though the financial hard times and it's harder to get money for sponsorship attendance at air shows is up 15 or 20 percent because people are hanging around home so they're, uh, mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. they're instead of going off on their trip to Italy or whatever, they're they're actually staying around home and doing a mm -hmm. family deal mm -hmm. at the air show. Great. Do you guys have anything else that you want to add? Well, thanks. <clears throat> but do you have anything you want to add, Ed? Ed you know, I'm, I'm, well, I'm sure glad you're doing this, Evan, because it's a. I, 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 yeah, thank you for, for having me. You know, Bud has yeah. done a lot more than I have, and but uh, I I think that. Uh, this stuff is still the mainstay, and especially the kind of planes that we fly. I really believe, like the Warbirds that he flies and that I fly, and my Sturman too, is something that's been around like at the beginning, it, uh, and it's still here today because it def definitely has an attraction and an appeal for the people. Right. You know, there's just a lot of facets. But the little airplanes that are, do these multiple tricks are are just fantastic yeah, so yeah. I don't know you're gonna see a little bit of a change maybe but um, I don't yeah. know there'll still be uh, I mean, be, uh, they will never stop making better and better little aerobatic airplanes uh, mind you they're they're starting to look alike now they're all kind of they all uh, they all look like and that's that's the only <laughs> they all tumble they, they all tumble they all do the same thing that's uh, why I think it's neat uh, to so see it's neat to have little warbirds else. and an older, older airplane and an information team and a uh, correct and and I think you're gonna see more Formation teams too uh, popping up because the military doesn't have the ability to go at every show that the people want them at. Right. So right, the right. next there thing they can do is, is get a team, a yeah. civilian team. So I mm -hmm. think you're going to see more of that. Yeah, and, and fireworks, pyrotechnics, and things like that. Like Eddie does pyrotechnics, and there's, some people want a nighttime show, and, uh, and that's always going to be popular. Yeah, that, that's, that's okay, but then it becomes very expensive, and, and it's, it's a lot of work. work. <laughs> a lot of, it's a lot it's of an work. awful lot of work for eight minutes, you know. Yeah, it's just right. an awful lot of work. It is. Well, thank you so much, guys. It was great. Well, thank you, Evan. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> thank you. Keep yep. up the good work, huh? Yeah. I will. And for more great interviews, you can visit my website at evanflies.com. That's E-V-A-N-F-L-Y-S dot com. Or just keep listening to Flightline Internet Radio.